Hey there, performance management students. My name is Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to help you pass your upcoming exam. We're going to look at variance analysis. Now, I've got a lot of videos on the numbers, on the calculations of variances, but in this video, we're going to do the discussion part. So I'll take you through question valet, parts B and C. Guys, let's get started. I've got question valet on the screen here. If you are interested in doing the calculations, please check the video right here. Look in the screen, you'll see a link to the calculation video. What I'd like to do is focus on parts B and C with you. The discussion or discursive part of the question. I think that there is a tendency when we're getting ready for PM, we overcalculate. We spend too much time on the calculations instead of stepping back, looking at the big picture view and recognizing that in section C, very often roughly half of the marks come from a discussion of the variances. So it's really important that you prepare for the discussion parts of the questions as well. Let's start with part B. Look at the number of marks. Two marks. Go with the principle that one mark is roughly equal to one idea. And you develop an idea with sentences, not sentence fragments. And we see briefly describe as the verb. The only time you should, you should use sentence fragments would be if they said outline something, briefly outline. And that really doesn't come up very often, if at all. So let's use complete sentences when we answer this. And we got to come up with two things, two ideas. And it's quite straightforward how the marks will be allocated. We've got to describe the sales mix contribution variance and the sales quantity contribution variance. So let us jump right into that. I'm going to go into the practice platform. This question is not in there, but there's no reason we can't use a blank workspace to do any questions that we want. Let's label what we're doing. So the marking team is so it's just crystal clear what's happening here. We put part B and we're being asked for two things. So let us segment our writing. We need a sales mix contribution variance. And we need a sales quantity contribution variance. So I have two headings for two marks. Now I'm just going to use plain, simple English and describe what that variance is all about. I'm going to avoid a dense academic style. This variance shows the impact on profit of selling the two valet products in a ratio different from the budgeted ratio. It ignores the impact of selling more or fewer total valets. There it is. That's about all I can do. I'm looking for one mark briefly describing something. There we have it. Let's do the next one. This variance shows the impact on profit of selling more or fewer total valets than budgeted while ignoring the ratio of the products. Guys, there you have it. Simple writing, simple sentences. That's what you need to do when we're briefly describing something. Let's move on to part C. We have more marks here and a rough time management rule that we can use is 1.7 minutes per mark. So if we're writing something for 10 marks, spend 17 minutes maximum on this part of the question. 
and that includes reading and planning. So when you get down to writing, it's more like 1.5 minutes per mark. So just be aware of your time. And let's find the verb. Now we need to discuss something. It doesn't say briefly, it says discuss. And the sales performance. So we wouldn't get marks if we got into profit or cost evaluation. So we're gonna stick to sales. And they want us to do two things, use our calculations and the information provided in the scenario. So we don't want to be generic. We want to link our answer to the details in this story above. And they tell us about three or four things that happened to this company. They tell us that there is a recession. They tell us that their main one of their competitors went out of business. And they tell us that customers are now keeping cars longer than they used to. So we can use all of this to try and show a little bit of business acumen in developing our answers. Let's go back to the practice platform and get rocking on this part of the answer. Again, let's label our work for the marker, make their life easier, part C. Now, now I'm going to do my best to structure my answer before I begin writing. What am I going to say? I'm not going to just jump into this and, and freestyle an essay. Well, let me talk about the overall sales performance. Let's talk about the sales quantity variance, what that tells us. Let's talk about the sales mix variance. So I've got a starting place to begin my writing. And if I can get two or three ideas under each of those headings, I'll have a comfortable pass. I'm not going for perfection. I'm going for comfortable pass. The business has performed well. Sales revenue is 33% higher than budgeted, and the sales subvariances will help us understand the causes of this. So I get started with a general comment about the overall change in sales and if it's a good or bad sign. Let's write more. Sales quantity variance. This variance is favorable and helps explain the increase in sales. We see that they sold more total valets than budgeted, which increased profit over the budget by 41, $48.1 thousand dollars. This was mostly from selling the double amount of minis than planned. This might be from the competitor closing, so valet had more, had higher market share than planned. Also, if people aren't buying new cars as often from the recession, maybe they're getting them cleaned more often instead. Guys, well-developed idea there, linking to the story, talking about the significance of that variance. There are marks happening there, two, maybe three marks. However, the business did not realize the full increase of the 41.8K above. We see they sold a greater percentage of minis than budgeted, which generate less contribution than the full. This led to an adverse sales mix of 6.6K. Guys, I've got a very well-developed idea there. I'm talking about the variance, the significance of that variance, the impact of that variance on profit, and I'm saying why or how it happened. So there's at least two marks there. Maybe if the marketing team are feeling generous, there's even three. And a final idea came to me, more information. To evaluate sales further, we could look at the sales price variances to see if they sold at a higher or lower prices than budgeted. Team, that's realistically what I could accomplish under exam conditions, having done all of those difficult calculations, 
and taken time to read the story and develop my ideas. And I've got a comfortable pass here. I've got two marks for part B, and I've got between six and eight marks for part C. Let's say seven. So that would be nine out of 12, or 75% of parts B and C combined. So that is a comfortable pass. Remember, you cannot achieve the writing perfection that you see in those model answers. So do your best. Use short, simple sentences. Find the variance. Interpret the number. Is it a good sign? Is it a bad sign? Say why and try to link your ideas to evidence from the story. Okay, friends, this is Steve Willis signing out for now. I hope you found this debrief helpful. Good luck on your upcoming PM exam.